Now then, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, today announced an additional $100 million in military assistance to Ukraine. And the NATO Secretary General said that there was a window of opportunity to help Ukraine rearm before a renewed Russian offensive. Well, I'm joined now by retired Brigadier General Kevin Ryan, a senior fellow at Harvard Kennedy School Belfer Center, who will serve as U.S. Defense Attaché to Moscow and Director of Army Strategy Plans and Policy at the Pentagon. Very good to talk to you, Brigadier General. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. So Jens Stoltenberg says there's a, a window of opportunity now to help the Ukrainians rearm. What do we need to get to them? Well, the Ukrainians have been pretty clear about what they want. They want aircraft, they want tanks, they want uh, air defense systems. Uh, some of those things the uh, U.S. and the West are giving and prepared to increase. I think that uh, uh, we should push through the uh, aircraft, too, which uh, up to now have remained uh, uh, something that uh, the West isn't willing to extend to uh, to Ukraine. But, but the air defense systems are coming, and we need to get more of them there. Uh, uh, this is a small window, but uh, I don't think we should... Uh, uh, fool ourselves that uh, this will all be over in a, in a couple of weeks. What uh, Uk Ukraine is going to continue to need resupply and uh, materials going forward. Why has there been a reluctance so far to supply the Ukrainians with that heavy weaponry, in particular aircraft you mentioned there? I remember early on in the conflict that the Poles offered to pass on some of their MiGs via the United States through Germany, but um, the United States quashed that idea. Why is there this reluctance? Well, uh, there's an abundance, maybe an overabundance of caution being exercised by both NATO and the United States. Uh, we do not want to uh, uh, go to war with a nuclear power, Russia. And uh, that's, uh, that's a good policy to have. Uh, then the question is, uh, how far can you go in provoking Russia while you're supporting and helping a partner like NATO, uh, like Ukraine? Uh, I think we can go farther than we have. Uh, I personally think that we can uh, uh, provide the aircraft and not risk a nuclear war with Russia. But, but this, is the, uh, this is the main concern. It's a valid concern, uh, and uh, I'm not going to throw stones at uh, uh, world leaders who have made a uh, decision about no-fly zones, et cetera. But there are still many things that we can do underneath that level. But you're saying that, that there is a possibility. Um, let's examine some of the scenarios. If aircraft are being delivered to airfields initially in Poland or Romania or wherever, tanks uh, as well, that the Russians may decide to attack those depots in NATO territory. Right, well, uh, this is a risk, and uh, there are risks associated with this war. Um, uh, those attacks uh, would violate uh, NATO's uh, Article 5 uh, agreement and could trigger uh, broader involvement by NATO, so there are some uh, uh, deter there is a deterrent uh, to Russia doing that. You know, we're already shipping in a bunch of stuff, uh, military uh, aid and so on, that's coming across the border into the Ukraine. And so Russia could theoretically uh, have that justification or reason now, but they haven't. Uh, and and uh, I think that uh, uh, it, it's enough of a deterrent to keep Russia out of NATO territory. Um, uh, and we could still move this stuff across by land. And what do we know, Brigadier General, about the shape of the Ukrainian forces? Of course, it takes people to operate all this equipment. I mean, given right. the, the, the fighting that they've been doing over the last six weeks, we hear a lot about um, the, the losses on the Russian side. What kind of shape do we know the Ukrainian forces to be in? Well, uh, I think they're in a far better shape than we anticipated they would be at this time. Uh, they have shown themselves capable of taking all sorts of different kinds of equipment, uh, British, American, and other uh, uh, anti-tank weapons, and mastering them in a short time to use them effectively in the war in, in Ukraine. So uh, I think they're in a good position. What they have to be careful is, of is not to get encircled. Uh, this war is going to move to the east now. The, the Russia has abandoned its uh, northern front. And it's going to move those troops to the east. And that's where this war began. That's where it's going to end. 
And uh, Ukraine has a lot of troops in the east battling that. That's why they, they've been able to hold the Russians where they are. The Russians will try to encircle those forces. Uh, Ukraine has to, at all costs, uh, prevent that. And what about getting this equipment? If it, is, if it is to be heavy equipment, particularly in terms of tanks and armored personnel vehicles, as you say, the fighting, the theaters now focus on the south and the east. That is a long, long way from, in particular, the border with Poland. Are they then vulnerable, those supply lines? Absolutely vulnerable. Uh, Russia has shown that it's attacking the supply lines. It's uh, attacking the airfields where uh, some things might be flown in. Uh, the rail lines so far uh, uh, have been left alone because a lot of those rail lines hold uh, or traffic uh, refugees. Um, but but this is a big risk. Uh, uh, so far, we've been successful in bringing a lot of equipment in this way. Uh, when you bring in tanks and aircraft, if you do, uh, those are far more visible. They'll have to come in by uh, uh, largely by rail. Uh, so. This will be an escalation of sorts, and it will be an, uh, an increased risk. As we talk uh, of this window of opportunity, unfortunately, to rearm, it's also a window of opportunity for the Russians to rearm and regroup. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, Russia's uh, experienced a lot of problems in their operations so far. Uh, they have some real challenges at the uh, lower tactical level with leadership and the troops. Uh, the troops are uh, not as well trained as I think the uh, as I, certainly as I expected they would be, and as uh, probably as, as well as the Russians were going to think them to be. But uh, they're, now they're running out of troops. Uh, they have started their draft cycle. They're going to get rid of about 134,000 conscripts over the next couple months. They have contract soldiers, but uh, they've used up, I think, all of their contract soldiers, most of them. So every contract soldier now that's uh, taken out of the war by casualty, uh, it's difficult to replace them. That's why they're going to foreign fighters. So Russia has a lot of problems uh, uh, at this point, uh, and so they have to refit, they have to retool. Uh, they also have a clock that's working against them, so they can't take six months to do this refit. They have to refit quickly in the matter of days and then start this uh, new uh, advanced new push from the east. I think they're going to do that. Brigadier General Ryan, it's always so great. You're sharing your knowledge with us. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you.